Um, what what holds schools back to reaching out to outside groups when it comes to bringing wellness and mental health to the education space? I think a lot of it's just bureaucracy, like, and... But tell me about the value of that bureaucracy. Because, like, we know it's politics, but, like, what walls are you running into as you try to bring more to the kids? Because right now, your job, with what I've seen, you really want to bring more value to that community as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think some of it is just branding. Mm -hmm. And do the powers that be feel like what it is that you're trying to bring aligns with the district's or the school system's mm -hmm. vision mm -hmm. and mission. Um, I think the other part of that is, again, I said it, I mentioned it earlier, but like knowing your community. And so like understanding what it is that the community is, is asking and wanting. Mm -hmm. um, and if it doesn't align with what you see is a need, like educating that community on why a certain resource or program is necessary. Do you think that's unfair? Because the, oh, yeah. the words you just used are very key in terms of what they view necessary for the community versus what actually is necessary for the community because you guys are on the front line. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I do not think it's completely fair, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of things are fair. Yeah, and I think, I think just understanding that and being able to learn how you can like navigate that mm -hmm. is half the battle right because i think at the end of the day if you have the record to show that something is impactful and is necessary then you can you can make room for it regardless of like what the current dynamics are um i think anything is possible um it just takes more work to, and it's really a, a question of like are you willing to put in that much more work to make sure that this comes you know, is offered to a community where you see the need or are you just willing to just keep it moving? And I think the other piece is like the education system as a whole is really focused on quantitative data as it relates to academics, which so, is so everything is a number. Yes, everything is a number. And I think I think the pandemic has really started to push educators to think about qualitative data like what is the experience um what are the stories between the numbers that we're not telling that we're not tapping into that really could be impactful and moving you know this work forward i think that is something that we're just now tapping into and, and realizing that it's just as important as the quantitative data that we're currently looking at um and i think that is what's going to really get the ball moving around like okay I see this need based on what I'm hearing, the experiences that the community is having, the experiences that I know these students need and, and need access to. Like, let's get this ball rolling in addition to like where we're trying to go in terms of moving or closing the gaps in terms of academics. OK, so what gaps exist? <laughs> <laughs> just, just straight to the cut, oh. you know, just take your time. I mean, even if you have stories you'd like to share and how that shouldn't exist in today's age, but it does. I think that for years, mm -hmm. we've just been doing education, right? Like, like you said, everything is a number. Mm -hmm. If I can move these kids these certain number of points, um, whether it's making sure that they make a year's worth of growth or that we move them to grade level, um, performance levels, then I've done my work. Um, but do we know the stories? Like what happens after that year that you spent with them? Like what stories do you know about the students and the families that you served? And like, how have you provided them with the skills that they need in order to continue doing what they did with you for years to come? Um, and be self-motivated to do that. Yeah. 
And so, you know, one story that I think about specifically is um, an eighth grader that I, you know, currently serve um, and his family. And I had a very, very direct conversation with him. And, um, you know, we talk about dropouts. We talk about like retention rates for students. But it's one thing to talk about the numbers and to actually see um see someone or see a statistic that represents that someone that you've learned to care about <sighs> yes and yeah. so like this particular student bright kid super bright intelligent mm -hmm. when he came to us we knew he was intelligent yeah. um and that he had a skill set um but he's battling whether he should stay in school or whether there's value to stay in school versus making money how he knows how to and mm -hmm. and like that's a very hard conversation to have um, it's easy to read about it. It's easy to talk about it from a theoretical perspective, but to like live and, and, and breathe the same air as someone who's actually experiencing that is a whole different level. And like, I found myself in that conversation, like thinking to myself, like, what can I do to prove to this young brother that like getting your education may not give you the immediate gratification that you need, but like doing what you're doing right now, uh, may very well give you what you need in the moment, but is that going to provide you the long, the longitudinal success that you you're looking for? And like, how do you convince somebody that that's you know that they need to take a different route? And that's hard, you know. I think our kids, and that's just one example, right? Like, I think there are so many distractions that are happening within our communities. Give that are, some examples. I think kids are you know, coming from households where they're taking care of their siblings, you know, parents for whatever reason are not able to, you know, take care, you know, of the family, whether it's because of their own mental health challenges or because of, you know, vices that they have, whether it be drugs, whether it be, you know, alcohol. Um, I think there are a number of, of factors that have played a part into that. Um, so yeah, I think that home dynamic and like what people, what kids are seeing outside of school really plays a big role in, in that, in that, um, I think the other piece is because this area is so diverse, there are a lot of experiences and ethnicities that we just don't understand. You know, I think if we don't intentionally try to understand those communities and try to understand those experiences. There's no way we can break those barriers to help them, to give them what they need mm -hmm. uh, from an educational perspective. <clears throat> can you give me an example of that? So one of the 